All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you <laughs> with my December 2015 update video for, you guessed it, December 2015. Woo. So yeah, this is my last uh, monthly update video for the year, and uh, as always with these things, you know, we'll kick off with some YouTube stuff as well as personal life stuff. And uh, I got a lot of cover on the personal life stuff, so. We'll just start off with the YouTube stuff, as always. <laughs> so, um, in YouTube news, um, as you guys know, I haven't been really all that busy on YouTube lately, and that's mostly just due to personal life stuff, which we'll get into in the next segment. But I have been working on some videos on the side, so um, those will be coming out very soon. It's uh, for now, it's just some unboxing videos, you know, since tis the season, right? So um, we're going to be getting those taken care of. Um, I'll be sure to do like live streams and stuff like that. I've really been enjoying uh, doing the live stream edits for my videos and stuff like that. So I uh, really like the interaction between me and you guys during those times. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for those, you know, be sure to leave a comment below in the booty boop or leave me a personal message. And I read all those things. <laughs> Even if I don't respond to all of them, I do read them all. So I'm just saying. But anyway, um, in addition to that, I've also been working on a secret project um, that, unfortunately, as of right now, I can't tell you at the time of this recording, just because I don't have, you know, the sufficient, I guess, rights? I don't know, way to say it, but like, you know, I don't really have the permission, I guess, to really publicly announce it yet. But I have been working on a secret project that I've been wanting to do for years, but just never really uh, got the time to do or just really had the know-how on how to do it. I'm working on it in secret. <laughs> and I really hope to uh, get this project out to you guys as soon as I can because uh, it's really a, uh, a labor of love. And uh, it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time, but right now I can't talk about it. But soon. Soon. <laughs> So, in addition to all that, um, you know, there's going to be more YouTube stuff coming out. Uh, but that's just all I have right now, you know, in the recording or the editing queue, rather. So, anyway, moving on to uh, personal life stuff. So, as you guys know from my uh, last update video, I've been busy looking for an apartment up in Kalamazoo so I can, you know, live up there and then start back at college again and um the hunt has you know been pretty unsuccessful for a while just due to um i guess i don't know if this is common elsewhere but in the kalamazoo area um they have this thing where you have to make at least three times the amount of your rent so say for instance your rent is you know 600 a month which is about the average up there actually you know, you have to make at least 1800 a month or more in order to qualify to rent up there. So, um, since at the time of this recording, the only income I have is would be from my BAH, which I'm not getting cut right now because I'm not in school right now. But once, you know, January starts rolling around, I'll start getting it. So since that would have been my only source of income and for the Kalamazoo area, it's a little over 1200, almost 13. You know, which is still a decent amount of money, but uh, not enough for their standards, I guess. So um, the hunt has been going pretty bad in that regard, but I do have some good news. Um, I just um, found a place out in Portage, which is the town right below uh, Kalamazoo. It just kind of blends together pretty much. So I'm really excited to uh, be doing some paperwork and signing the lease and getting that ball rolling before the new year starts and <laughs> oddly enough i'm gonna be signing the lease and doing all that stuff on my birthday december 7th so you know for those of you who've been around for a while watching my videos for a while my last apartment in uh, yokosuka japan i actually signed the paperwork and all that kind of stuff on my birthday as well so for my uh what would have been like my 28th birthday i guess yeah, for my 28th birthday, and now for my 30th birthday coming up, you know, I'm going to be getting an apartment for my birthday. So that's that's a pretty sweet deal, you know, not going to lie. And, uh, you know, the apartment I'm going to be getting now up in Michigan is not going to be as fancy as the one in Yokosuka, you know. <laughs> but um, 
It is uh, really nice. It's close to a lot of stores and things like that. So I'll be within, you know, good walking distance of those or driving distance. Cause you know, hey, in America we drive everywhere, right? I mean, I'm in my car right now, so. <laughs> But uh, it's good to know that there's a lot of stores nearby, so if, you know, gas money's kind of tight that month, I can just walk there and get something. Real excited to finally have a place lined up because it just, you know, for the longest time I didn't think I was going to get a place. And I was just like, what am I going to do? How am I going to make it? Like, am I going to have to live out of my car or like what, you know? And, you know, I was considering, you know, going into the dorms and stuff like that, but I didn't know if they had like an age policy, you know. So, some colleges do, not all. I was just afraid that they would have like an age policy or something like that, and uh, I wouldn't be able to get into the dorms, but you know, whatever. But you know, it all worked out, so <laughs> I'm real, uh, real glad for that. And I'm gonna be starting the move in process uh, a little bit before Christmas, so I should be all moved in uh, before Christmas. At least that's the plan right now. So I'm getting moving stuff all taken care of, you know. Setting up the U-Haul, you know, getting stuff. Well, stuff's already packed pretty much because of my uh, PCS move back to the States. It was all already packed away and put in boxes and stuff like that. So now it's just a matter of putting it into a U-Haul and taking it up there. So really, there's not a whole lot of prep work to be done. But I'm taking care of some loose ends here and there, stuff like that. So um, the plan is, uh, you know, once... Uh, I get all moved up there to Kalamazoo to uh, find a job, basically, because, you know, yeah, I have a decent amount in savings and I'm going to be getting BAH, but I still need at least some kind of part-time income to help cover the bills and stuff like that, so I'm not living so lean, you know, or relying on my savings account to, you know, cover the difference, because it's only so finite. <laughs> so, um just really excited to you know finally be moving forward with the whole college thing because uh, it's been a long time coming and um you know I was talking with my mom about it last night is that you know I've been you know wanting to go back to college for eight years now you know because uh, May 2007 was my last was the last time I was in college and you know it's been almost 10 years and I'm you know I've been fighting to get back into college you know during that three year stint in between college and the Navy you know I was trying to get my life back on track again and it just wasn't working and then when I joined the Navy you know I did the whole well you know see the world do my thing and then you know once I'm done with that go back to college and you know it's just you know I've really uh, grown as a person as far as that whole experience with the Navy and I've had a lot of bad times in it but I've also had a lot of good times too and I think overall it's really uh, helped mold me as a person and uh, yeah I don't I don't regret joining at all you know but I think everything you know worked out the way I wanted it to and you know some people are like why didn't you stay the whole six years you know why couldn't you just you know lose a little bit of weight or suck it in or something like that and I guess you know the truth is I just felt it was my time to go you know I just I felt like I didn't have anything left to really offer the Navy and then you know the Navy really didn't have anything more to offer to me that was enticing to me you know to compel me to stay other than you know making the next rank, which, you know, I was up for recently, but, you know, got out, so <laughs> what you gonna do? Um, but it just, you know, I just kind of looked at it because, you know, when I made, you know, second class or E5, um, I really had to kind of think about it because my, my whole plan going into the Navy since day one was to, you know, do my initial enlistment, you know, see the world, explore, do all kinds of things, make all kinds of cool videos, whatever. And then once that's all done, get out and go to college. But when I made E5, especially when I started getting paid as an E5 and got to enjoy the benefits of an E5, like BAH and stuff like that, um, I really had to kind of sit down and think about it because, you know, in addition to a pay increase, I'm also getting, you know, a housing allowance too. So um, 
that's covered. So the rest of my income is, you know, a lot of disposable income. So um, I really had to weigh the pros and cons and I really had to think about, you know, well, what if I did decide to reenlist? You know, what would what would my goal be if I decided to do just at least one more term, you know, another four years or whatever. And, you know, obviously the next goal would be making, yeah, SCG-1 and then SCG-C eventually, you know. So um, I just kind of looked at other people in those positions and just kind of, you know, just shattered them a little bit, just kind of followed to see what they do and, you know, what my potential future could be like if I were to assume the next rank. And it just, I mean, to me, it wasn't really all that appealing for me anyway. I mean, for some people, you know, they may be totally fine, you know, taking in a more leadership role. But I'm not really that kind of person. I'm not, I just, I'm not really a babysitter, you know. I don't like dealing with people, you know. So that's not really my bag. So I figured, well, you know, what if I just became like the subject matter expert? What if I learned as much about sonar as I possibly could, about the equipment, ASW, whatever. And I kind of shadowed people who were in that field, you know, or in that mode, I guess, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, they didn't really, they, they got looked down on a lot, actually. I mean, sure, you know, they were the saving grace when the equipment went down and nobody knew what to do, except for them, but... Uh, in most other cases, they were just kind of looked down upon because, yeah, they knew a lot about sonar and stuff like that, but they weren't, you know, the hotshot, you know, go-getter type person that, you know, the Navy looks for. And so, you know, they just, you know, were looked down upon, and that, did, that didn't really appeal to me either. So, you know, for me, it was just like, you know, I had my fun in the Navy. I had a lot of good times. Um, met a lot of great people from all walks of life and all over the country and all over the world, in fact, you know. There were some people who were outside of America that joined the Navy, and they were a blast to get to know. But, you know, at that point in time, I just realized, you know, the writing's on the wall, man. Like, it's, it's my time to go. And, you know, if you guys are out there considering, you know, getting out of the service, I'm not going to discourage you at all, by no means. But I do want you to at least, you know, think about what life's going to be like on the outside. Have a plan and save. Save as much money as you possibly can. And, you know, that's, that's, you know, that helped me out so much. I mean, had I not saved up so much money over the years, like, I wouldn't have this car. I wouldn't have been able to pay for this car in full, you know. <laughs> You know, at best, I would be leasing a car and then have to pay that. And then car insurance would be way jacked up. And, you know, what if the car broke down? You know, I'd have to pay to repair that, too. And it would just add up over time. So, you know, if you do plan on getting out, save, save, save. Now, that's not to say you can't go out and enjoy yourself at all. You know, I still saved a lot of money. And I went out a lot and I bought a lot of expensive things, you know, some of them I shouldn't have, but you know, you live and learn. But I did manage to save up enough money to have a nice little cushion so that way when I did get out, I could get a vehicle and have enough saved up to where there's going to be some transitionary time before, you know, if you want to go back to school, you know, there's going to be a little bit of transitionary time because you're not going to get out right before the semester starts. And you're not gonna be able to get a place right before the semester starts. You know, it's just, it doesn't operate that smoothly. There's gonna be a little bit of transition time. And plus, you know, you yourself have to get used to civilian life again. So, you know, there's that to consider. And, you know, I, I, I might make this a, a future video where I go into more detail and stuff like that. And speaking of which, just as a little segue, <laughs> you know, the segue from the segue, um, I do want to, uh, starting next year, January 2016, <laughs> um, I do want to make uh, a Life After the Navy series, which is going to be my sequel series to NFAX, which is going to talk more about um, Life After the Navy, obviously, since the name, <laughs> and, you know, just what to think of when, 
when you're transitioning out and things to do while you're in the service, you know, to help the transition process. And, you know, maybe I can talk a bit more uh, honestly about um, a lot of my experiences in the Navy because while I was in, it was, it was difficult to make videos about the Navy while I was in the Navy because, you know, you're kind of put in this position where you're seen as a representative of the Navy and you are, you know, you're an ambassador. That's what they always say. That's their, you know, that's their key phrase. You know, you're an ambassador to the Navy and ambassador to, the, to America and stuff like that. And so if I were to talk uh, negatively about the Navy, even if it was opinion-based, um, that would really reflect poorly on me and then the Navy. And, you know, if the wrong person saw it, you know, they could, you know, get my channel taken down and I might get in trouble or something like that. I mean, I didn't, I really had to tread carefully as far as, you know, what I could talk about. And this is by no means discouraging people from talking about their military experience. It's just, you know, if you, if you are gonna talk negatively, you gotta put disclaimers and make it known that, you know, this is your opinion. This isn't a statement coming from the United States Navy or anything like that. It's just you as a citizen, it's your opinion. And then you should be okay, you know? So um, just take precautions, you know, is what I'm saying. So, um, I think I've rambled on long enough with this video. Um, hmm, excuse me. Uh, so, I think we'll end it here. And uh, once I get settled up in Kalamazoo, I'll probably do a second update video to show you guys around the new place. Um, and then try to get into some kind of video schedule. Because that's what I want to do. I mean, I guess you could say it's my New Year's resolution for 2016 is to get into a set video schedule. So that way, you know, it's not too uh, unpredictable as far as when I'm doing videos and stuff like that. Now, for these, you know, personal vlogs and stuff like that, you know, it's it'll have to be like an as time allows sort of thing, because I'm gonna be very busy with, you know, school and work and stuff like that. But, you know, I've been busy before and I've still managed to crank out videos, so. It's all a matter of finding a schedule and finding a groove and getting into it and stuff like that. So just <laughs> give it a little time and eventually it'll settle down. So yeah, you know, can't wait to also start up Andy Cade again, um, my long dormant Let's Play channel. Um, I've been looking at a lot of, uh, of Let's Players lately and just kind of, you know, cherry picking things that I like from their channel, you know, that's a bit more subtle as far as like production and things like that like what they talk about how they do things you know the little edits and stuff they put in you know the, the flow of the series and, and stuff like that and i just been kind of you know doing a blueprint for a new and improved Andy Cade <laughs> so um, definitely check that out soon It'll probably be starting uh, next year in January so yeah <laughs> more to come and with that said this is the Andy song. It's not enough for now. Thanking you guys boop, for tuning in on this rambly update video and for watching my other stuff. Also want to thank you guys for liking, thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send up your friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.